Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. I want to thank them because they hold that line until we shift and move into the next dimension of worship. And what you all don't know, some of them had issues this morning. Sickness hit some of them. Accidents hit some of them. Issues with their car and health hit some of them. But they made up in their mind to press their way. Come on, come on, give it, give it up for them on the day. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And uh, it's with great joy and privilege and pleasure that we are in this place and in this space. And we dare not take for granted the moments that we have in worship. Amen. Do me a favor while you're standing next to someone. I know you've greeted your guests because we're a loving church and we care about people and we represent God. But I want you to tell somebody close to you, I'm glad to see you. And I'm so glad you're here. Come on, come on. We, we got to appreciate people and show them love. You're, that, that may be the only kind words somebody received all week. Come on, God put you here on assignment next to somebody to encourage them. Amen. I, I, I want to give you a scripture and I want to give you a principle really quickly. The Bible says he who waters will also himself be watered. Okay, that means sometime what you're looking to get, God wants you to give it first. So if you're looking for encouragement, sometime God wants you to be an encourager before you get it. If you want to compliment, sometime God wants you to compliment somebody else before you get it. How many of y'all know you get what you give? Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Amen. And people, don't nobody support me. Don't nobody back me up. Who are you supporting? Who are you backing? Amen. Because you get what you give now. Amen. Listen, really quickly, we've been in an awesome and amazing series that has brought so much joy to me entitled Exodus, and uh, we're going to shift gears on today. It's all going to make sense as we tie all of this together, and I want you to open up your Bibles and turn with me to Psalm chapter 145. Psalm chapter 145 uh, in your Bible. <clears throat> there is a powerful and poignant passage of Scripture. I am going to read 12 verses 12 verses of Psalm chapter 145 verse 1 through 12 amen when you have arrived please say amen amen I'm going to read from the New King James Version uh, of Psalm 145 and let's pray God we are so grateful and thankful for these precious moments we have together to be here God we count it a blessing we thank you for the praise and the worship that has already been rendered, that has already been offered, that is due to your name. God, as we come into this place and in this space, speak to our hearts and to our minds. God, we ask that you would strengthen us and encourage us, infuse us with hope, with joy, with peace, with thanksgiving, with tranquility. God, and we ask that as we hear your word, it would not fall on deaf ears. We know that when the word goes forth, it is not just for that moment, but God, it is for a lifetime. So God, we ask that what we hear would stay with us and remain with us and push us and challenge us and shape our thinking and our mode of operating. Bless us now as we've assembled in this place and in this space, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It sounds just a little faint in, in there, but Psalm 145, verse 1 through 12 when you have arrived, please say amen. All right, y'all already there. Here it is. I will extol you, my God, O King. And I will, somebody say I will. I will. Bless your name forever and forever. Every day I will bless you. And I will praise your name forever and forever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts. And I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness 
and shall sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Today I want to talk about praise is in order. Praise is in order. Help me and turn to your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, anytime and any place, praise is always in order. Oh, you didn't say it strong enough. T turn to the other neighbor and tell him like Janet Jackson, anytime and any place, praise is always in order. Amen. You may be seated. It's obvious that God places a high premium on praise. In fact, Psalms is the largest book of the Bible. It contains 150 chapters that share the unique experience of individual encounters with God. All of the individual writers of Psalms had some type of experience with God and they live to tell their testimony and share their story and offer up their praise. It spans over 1,000 years and it is comprised of over 100 authors, various individuals who had encounters with God and they tell their stories of God's goodness and God's greatness. One of the writers of Psalms is King David. In fact, David writes 78 of the 150 Psalms because he had experienced personally God working on his behalf. And I know that most of us know David as a warrior. He's skilled in the art of war, kills the giant Goliath, that champion of the Philistines. But David was not just a warrior, David was also a worshiper. He's a songwriter and a composer. He is a great music, musician and artisan. And David from his pen, watch what he says, I made up in my mind, no matter the situation, I'm still going to give God the glory. I love this because point number one, your praise is to be personal. Let the church say personal. Notice what he says, I have had a personal encounter with God where he has worked on my behalf. So I made up in my mind that every day I am going to wake up, I'm going to give God the glory that's due his name, and I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I love this because David makes it his regiment and routine. He says, I personally am responsible when I wake up each day to give God the glory and the thanks and the honor that he is due because all of us who are here when our feet hit the floor, when we wake up and God allows us to see a brand new day, have a personal responsibility to lift up our hands and to give God the glory. See, praise is not something you can delegate to the praise team. It is not something other people can do in your place. God wants to hear it personally from you. You. Because God, if he, if you really appreciate God and you really value what he's done in your life, you cannot be poked or prodded or pushed by the praise team to praise him. You ought to have a personal praise. I, I didn't even mean to get started so fast and so hard and so heavy this early. I didn't mean to set it off this early, but I want to know it about 20 people up in this place who can say, I made up in my mind that I'm going to bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'm going to praise him when I'm up. I'm going to praise him when I'm down. I'm going to praise him in sunshine. going to praise him in rain. I'm going to praise him when it's dark. I'm going to praise him when it's good. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I love this because we are so accustomed to celebrating and applauding and praising people when they perform great works. 
You go to an orchestra and you see great musicians begin to play skillfully. We stand up and clap our hands and celebrate them. When we go to a recital and see people perform, it is proper for us to stop at the end of the performance and clap our hands. Recently, I was at a basketball game and a certain player came into the arena and they called his name and called everybody to stand on their feet, put their hands together and cheer him on. And I said, wait a minute. He Here's a person who's good, no doubt, in their field, but they never stopped by to see me when I was sick. They never checked upon me when I didn't have money. They don't know my name. And here is God who knows every hair on my head, who's paid my bills, got me well when I was sick. He knows my name, performed wonders this week. I owe it to him when I enter into his gates and I enter into his presence to stand up on my feet, open up my mouth, and give him glory. Now, I'm going to give you another chance. If God has opened up a door, if God has made a way, if God has ever paid a bill, if God has ever got you well when you were sick, is there anybody here who's made up in their mind praise is proper? David said, I've got to give God the glory because it's expected of me. God expects it from me. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. God has given every creature a mouth to make a sound with. God, if, if God has blessed the robin to have sense enough to get up in the morning and sing his song, if the elephant can lift up his trunk like a trumpet, if God can allow the dog to bark and the cat meow, surely those of us who are in here shouldn't have a problem opening up our mouths and giving God the praise. Somebody say it's expected of me. But it's not only expected, it has to be expressive. Because I know there are some people who are of the influence and persuasion, it don't take all that. It don't take all that. And you know, Pastor, God knows my heart. I praise him in my heart. That's good. But if God, if you love him and it's in your heart, he ought to hear it sometime. Because... If somebody says they love you but never tell you that, sometime you're going to question whether or not they love you. I, I, you're telling me your heart, but I want to hear it from you. I want to hear you tell me that you love me, you're appreciative, that you're grateful, that you're thankful. And God says it should not only be voluntarily done, it should be verbally done. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. And praise is proper. It's a proper response when God has done anything for you to tell him thank you. As we approach Thanksgiving, we are in a generation of people who are unthankful, who are unappreciative, who are ungrateful. You can do stuff for people and they act like you owed it to them. There are people who have a sense of entitlement and if we are not careful, we can start taking God's blessings for granted. The fact God bless you to get up, pump gas in your car, put your pedal to the metal, dress yourself, comb your hair, get ready and bathe and wash and clothe. That's reason enough to give him glory because somebody's laying in the hospital on a bed somebody else is feeding them tending to them taking care of them and you got the audacity not to lift up your hands and open up your mouth I'm sorry I thought I had some folk up in here who really understood that praise is in order it's in order when I'm on my job if I have to stop and pause and take a praise break in the bathroom it's in order when I'm at the stoplight and I'm all by myself and I think of the goodness of Jesus and tears start coming down my face it's in order when I get my check at the end of the week it's in order when I get the doctor's report cause I made up in my mind I'm still gonna give God some glory is there anybody in here who don't mind giving God some glory that anytime anywhere I'll set it off I don't need an organ I don't need a praise team when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me my soul cries out hallelujah I know I know what it is let me refresh your memory as to who David was and why David prays the way he did because David is the king who nobody thought would be the king 
So when David becomes the king, first thing David does, he wasn't a shallow type of person. In fact, he's the king. First thing he doesn't seek is the death of his enemy or material things or building himself a house. The first thing he goes after is the glory. David becomes the king and he searches for the Ark of the Covenant. It had been captured and taken by the Philistines. So when he hears this at Obed-Edom's house and blessings are breaking out at Obed-Edom's house, he asks God if he can bring the ark back to the holy city of Jerusalem. And the Bible says that when the ark was being brought through the streets of Jerusalem, David couldn't help himself. He started praising and dancing before God. In fact, he started praising so hard that he came out of his clothes. His wife was sitting in the window looking down on him while he prays. Now, his wife was a little bit bougie. She she had been brought up as a pampered princess. So when she saw David dancing like that, she said, what in the world were you doing? Don't you know it's improper for you, the king, to be dancing like that in front of them people? You forgot protocol and rank. There's a special way those of us who are royals are supposed to conduct ourselves. David said, you got to excuse me. I didn't grow up in the palace. God came and found me in the pasture. And the fact I'm in the palace right now is reason enough for me to praise so you got to excuse me when I look back over my life and I think about what God brought me out of all the stuff he did for me I don't care who's watching I don't care where I'm at I'm going to give God some glory I want to know if there's some people up in here who can put a praise on it right where you stand if God took you from the bottom raised you to the top got you to where you are open up your mouth and let everybody on on your role, no praise is always in order. But wait a minute. Here's why I love it. Because you not only need a personal praise, write that down. Your praise should be passed down. Because it's heavier than just a moment of worship and what God has done in your life. Verse 4 says, from generation to generation. Pay, praise is to be perpetuated. It's to be passed down because that's how the next generation knows what God has already done. Because if you don't know what God has done, you won't know what God can do. This is why you got to go back and draw from those who've been with God for a while because there was a faith that they had that's going to give you the fortitude in your now. If God took care of your grandmother, if God took care of your grandfather under Jim, Jim Crow, segregation, last hired, first fired, y'all ain't talking to me. If God has blessed you to where you are right now, surely God can help us survive another the term of 45. I feel like preaching up in this house. Is there anybody up in this place who got a for real praise? It's to be passed down. Because David said from generation to generation. Don't miss this. In other words, it's the oral tradition. Those of us who are African American understand the oral tradition. Because in Africa, the way they teach their history is orally. The oral tradition, even when African Americans during slavery were in bondage and oppression, we still continued that process of the oral tradition. In fact, it is, it is the Negro spirituals that Richard Allen comprises in 1801 when he founds the African Methodist Episcopal Church that helped African Americans deal psychologically with the issues of slavery. In fact, some of those songs serve dual purposes. When they sang Swing Low Sweet Chariot coming forth to carry me home. When they sang Steal Away. Those songs were not just spirituals. They were 
hinting to those who were getting ready to run off the reservation, we getting ready to meet down by the riverside. They shared with our forefathers those songs and they picked them up so that in the 1950s and 60s during the civil rights and they faced Bull Connor and they faced water hoses and dogs when they faced the bigotry and brutality of segregationists they could boldly declare we ain't gonna let nobody turn us around so the next time you get a job that your father couldn't get the next time you move in a neighborhood that was formerly red line the next time you go to a university that wouldn't have looked at your application the next time you were able to purchase a vehicle they wouldn't have given you the loan money for you ought to give God some glory and some prayer I'm sorry I thought I was in the right house is there anybody here who can just praise God for all the small things can you praise God for nothing because if you praise God for nothing God will give you something God has already blessed you God has already made some ways you ought not to have a problem giving him the glory and it's passed down I'm going to dig and I'm going to mess with you. I'm going to mess with you real quick. I feel like the chain has been broken. Because God speaks to Israel specifically. Watch what he tells them. He says in Deuteronomy, don't miss this, we're still dealing with the subject of Exodus. God brings them out of Exodus and they're in a period of transition. So in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, hold on, watch what God says. Hold on, I'm about to bless y'all, but I'm about to bless you so good that if you're, gonna, if you're not careful, you're going to forget how bad you had it. Because God can bless you so good that you can forget how bad you had it. Y'all ain't lived long enough. Don't, don't you forget that you had cheese and crackers growing up. Don't you forget that you had Spam, bologna, and cheese. Y'all better talk back to me up in here. I know, I know you got wings and things and steaks on your plate, but some of us know some about beans and cornbread. Holler back at me up in this house. God can bless you so good. that you get amnesia. In fact, I'm going to dig. In fact, I'm going to dig. Some of us, God is asking the question, I know you want that, but how high can I lift you without losing you? Because some of us, if God blessed us, we forget about him. Some of us, if God bless us, I won't see you on Sunday morning. Some of us, when God open up a door for you, you stop coming to Bible study. Some of y'all, when God bless, oh, I'm getting that old school preaching right now. I'm sorry, I'm going to come down your row. Because some of us need to be reminded it was God. Before you got the degree, it was God. When they gave you the interview, it was God. When you closed on that house, it was God. When you got that card note, it was the Lord. And if you're going to keep it. You're going to need to keep walking with him. God said, hold on. I'm about to take y'all in. But here's what God said. I don't want you to forget where you came from. I don't want you to forget the wilderness wanderings. I don't want you to forget the manna. I don't want you to forget the quail. I don't want you to forget the Red Sea crossing. I don't want you to forget the fire by night and the pillar of cloud by night. I don't want you to forget that because I'm going to get it so good for you. If you're not careful, you're going to forget how bad you had it. Then God says this. Don't miss it. He says, you all have a responsibility to teach your children about me. You got an obligation to make sure you teach them who I am. In fact, God would have them set up monuments of stone. Then God said, I want you to tell your children when you walk past here that we were slaves in Egypt. We wandered in the wilderness, but God made a way. Then God said, I don't want you to just make it a statement. I want you to make it a song. I want you to sing hymns and songs that bring glory to my name. Because I want it down in their spirit. I want it in their psyche. I want them to learn how to lift up their hands and give them glory. I want them to offer me praise and honor that's due who I am. 
and I want you to teach it to them orally. I want you to teach them how to praise and worship me. I want you to teach them how to lift up their hands. I don't just want you exposing them to trap music. I want you to expose them to clap music. I need them to come to church on Sunday morning knowing how to lift up their hands because if they can recite Megan the Stallion, they ought to be able to sing some blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine because there are going to be some problems Megan lyrics can't solve. There's going to be some issues Jeezy can't help them through. But if you teach them how to call on the name of the Lord, is there a witness up in this house that knows praise is still powerful enough to take you to another place? God says, teach it to them. Can I tell y'all this? I'm going to mess with y'all. It's 1130. Y'all throw stones at me later. I, 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 it saddens me when I pull to the stoplight and I look over in a car, and there's a car seat in the back seat. And I'm hearing curse words and profanity. And the child is repeating it. And the child has that in their spirit and their psyche. And the parent don't have sense enough. Yeah, I told you I was going to mess with you. To know that's going to mess up their spirit. Then a year or two from now, you asking pastor lay hands on them, pray over them. No, you should have got that spirit out of them before you played that in them. I wish I had somebody that had helped me on this morning. You better bring them to church even when they don't feel like it and say, you better put that PlayStation down. Give me back my phone. Stand up on your feet during praise and worship. Lift up your hands and give God some glory. Open up your mouth. I don't care if you're mad or not. Ask for me in my house. We're going to serve the Lord. Have I got a witness up in this place? And here it is. They're filled with all that mess. But they're not filled with God's message. God said there's a generation in the book of Judges. He said they grew and they knew not the Lord or what he done. Y'all know why I go so hard in ministry? Because there's a generation whose grandmothers didn't expose them to this. Whose mothers didn't expose them to Y'all know why we go so hard with children's church And worship throughout the week And we trying to see people get saved Because they full of all that secular stuff But they ain't been exposed to the sacred But I believe if we get them exposed enough to God It will create a hunger and a thirst for righteousness They'll turn away from all that stuff And keep going after God Matter of fact I speak revival in the city of Indianapolis I believe there's some young people Who have made up in their mind I'm going after God Because if you seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness everything you're looking for will be added unto you touch somebody and tell them go after the glory it's got to be passed down it's got to be passed down don't miss this it's got to be passed down they may not remember my sermon but if you put a song in them, they'll remember a song. When they go off to college by themselves and they got their own apartment, when they take a job in another state and they get discouraged and they get down on their knees and they begin to pray and seek after God and that song starts stirring up in their mind that God is great and God is faithful. It'll pull them out of that place. You got a responsibility to expose them to the things of God so God can write a song on their heart. Okay. Okay, let me help y'all. Because uh, some of us who are in here right now, that don't get it twisted. For those who didn't grow up in church, don't get it twisted. Uh, all of us who are in here were at some place or another where we came back to God. Okay? Okay, don't act like that. I see a halo, halo. I see a halo. You want to act like. You didn't make some mistakes. You didn't do some dirt. But the truth is, God pulled us out of some dirty places. And the reason some of us praise is because you don't know our past. The reason some of us lift up our hands is because you don't know what God brought us out of. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries. Have I got some folk up in here who know praise is in order? Because there was a time you wasn't in church on Sunday morning. There was a time you didn't have a 
Bible to read. There was a time you wouldn't have been doing good works, but look at what the Lord has done in your life. Somebody in here on your row, open up your mouth. Give God some glory. Let it reverberate down your row. I love this. I love this because David says, your praise, don't miss this, has got to, number one, be personal. Your praise, number two, has got to be passed down. Your praise, number three, has got to be persistent. Somebody say persistent. David had some dark days. David had some difficult moments. In fact, David is anointed to be the king. He had brothers who were jealous of him, a liar who questions him when he goes to the battle before he fights Goliath. His brother begins to talk down on him. He not only has the battle at home, they didn't even bring him out when Jesse came to anoint the sons. He gets a mentor by the name of King Saul, serves under him for a while. Saul is a crafty, tricky kind of man. He sends David on missions intended for him to die and not succeed. But the Lord was with him. And when the Lord is with you, it doesn't matter what weapons are formed against you. God will always make sure you come out on top. Now, can I take a personal moment right there? Because there are some people been fiending for you to fall, still wishing for you not to do well, and they don't know how you keep on coming out of their traps, coming out of their tricks, coming out of their schemes, coming out of their plots, because the Lord is with me. And when you got the Lord on your side, no weapon formed the I'm sorry, just for a moment, allow me this moment. Have I got 30 people who will just shout up in here that there's been some stuff come against you, but God has always brought you out of it. Make some noise in this place. Because if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be but God? Okay. He's anointed to be the king. He not only has to run from Saul, he runs behind enemy lines to the Philistines. David has to act crazy just to stay there. King Akish allows him a region he can stay in on his own. David's doing well for a while, but his house is burnt down. His family is taken and captive. The men who had been riding with him spoke of stoning him. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Because there's going to be some times you can't get a hold of the pastor. There's going to be some times you can't get a hold of the church. There's going to be some times you're in trouble and it ain't Sunday morning. And you're going to need something on the inside of you that you draw up from yourself. You better make sure your well and reservoir is deep enough that when you are by yourself, you can make some withdrawals when you need to and say, I still am going to give God some glory. David comes out of that place. But... It was his praise that preserved him. Because David goes on to become the king. Write Psalm 34, Psalm 145, and 76 other psalms. One of them is, I would have fainted unless I believe. That I see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In other words, there were some days that I didn't think I would be able to make it. I was down, discouraged, and depressed. But that's when I begin to praise God. Because for the spirit of heaviness, you got to put on a garment of praise. Because when you begin to praise, praise will cause you to go to another place. Because your praise will elevate you. When you're feeling down, that's not the time for you to sing sad songs. That's the time that you start calling 
calling on the name of the Lord. Because when you begin to praise, praise begins to shift you to another place. Wasn't it Paul and Silas who were locked up in prison? They were bound at the hands and feet. But the Bible says when they praise God, that God sent an earthquake, shook up the foundations of the prison, broke the chains off of them, and freed them where they are. If you're looking for God to do something in your life, it ain't going to happen with your arms folded, feeling sorry for yourself, being mean and nasty and hard to get along with. It comes when you make up in your mind. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. You got to keep on pushing. You got to keep on praising. You got to keep on believing. You got to keep on giving God some glory. Not every day is going to feel good. Not every day is going to be sunshiny. Not every day going to be the way you want it. But you got to make up in your mind to push. Touch somebody and tell them push. Praise until something happens. Give God glory till the door opens. Lift up your hand till he makes a way. Keep on pressing your way to work. Keep on coming to the house of worship. Make up in your mind. I'm not going to let the devil steal my song. He can have my house, but you can't have my song. You can take my job, but you ain't going to have my joy. You can take my car, but you ain't going to take my song. Because this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. Have I got anybody here who's made up in your mind that you're going to bless the Lord no matter how dark it gets no matter how difficult it gets no matter how heavy it becomes that you made up your mind to stand up on your feet open up your mouth and wave your hand and give God all the glory you got if I've touched you where you are and you made up your mind that you're still going to give God all the glory he's got I dare you to stand up on your feet, open up your mouth, and let the devil know you are not going to have my song. I'm still going to sing. I'm still going to praise. I'm still going to speak well of him. I'm still going to open up my mouth. I'm still going to wave my hand because when praises go up, blessings come down. Have I got a witness? Is there anybody here who don't mind standing on your feet and rise, shine, give God some glory? I said rise, shine, and give God some praise. If he's won any victories, if he's fought any battles, if he's dried any tears, if he healed you when you were sick, if he's opened any doors, you ought to, you ought to, you ought to, you ought to, you ought to stand on your feet and wave your hand and give God some glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. 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 Oh, I wish I had 50 people who would just keep praising God. Oh, give him glory. Oh, bless his name. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, keep praising him. Keep praising him. It's in order. It's in order. Keep praising him. It's in order. Keep praising him. It's in order. Keep praising him for whatever's out of order. Keep praising him for whatever's out of order in your life. It will get in order if you bless him. Praise him till the trouble subsides. Praise him till you get the victory. Praise him till you come out of it. Praise him until the battle is won. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's getting good to me now. Oh, yeah. It's getting real good to me now. Oh, yeah. Daddy. 
Come on, somebody, give God some glory. There it is. Let me say this. Let me say this. Y'all got to excuse me. I went to a conservative Bible college. I went to a conservative Bible college, and they looked down on all that. They looked down on praise and worship like that. I went to a conservative Bible college, and I said, wait a minute. When you see praise, number one, you don't know a person's past. God didn't save all of us from the same stuff. He saved all of us, but not from the same stuff. So you don't know their past. Then you don't know what they're standing in anticipation for. Two weeks from now, I graduate with my master's degree in Christian leadership. Now, I know, I know they don't want everybody standing up making noise when names are called. So y'all got to excuse me. I'm doing my victory dance now. I'm giving some glory, God the glory now. I wish I had some folk that would dance with me. I wish I had some people that would praise with me. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. Oh, give him glory. Give him glory for what's on the way. Give him glory for the next door that's about to open. Give him glory for what you've been praying on. Because your prayer is about to be turned into a praise. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. One more time, put your hands together all over this building. Stand on your feet and give God some glory in this house. Let me say this really quickly. And I'm about to close. And you know, you know, you know, I want to tell y'all something. The reason I praise God like this, I, I want you to understand something. People who praise generally have the victory. People who praise generally have the victory. I want you to get this. Can I give y'all overflow 1130? You know why the devil don't want you giving God praise? Maybe, maybe y'all don't know this. The devil was the chief music minister in heaven. I, I want to say it so you understand it. Satan wasn't always the devil. His name was Lucifer. He was the minister of music in heaven. Now watch this. He messed up one time and got put out of heaven. We mess up over and over and over and over, yet God's grace still keeps us. So he's jealous, number one. He's jealous. Number two, he doesn't want God getting glory. He wants it going to him. That's why he got put out of heaven, because he lifted up himself and said, I will be like the most high, and he wanted the angels to worship him. And God said, not around here, and put him out. He don't want you worshiping because it reminds him of the position he lost. You better open up your mouth and let the devil know you're going to bless God and give him glory and praise. Stomp on his head right there. All over the feet, stand on your, all over the building, stand on your feet. Let, let me, let me. Let me give it to you like this, and I'm closing, I'm gone. David is a king. He becomes a king. I want to give y'all overflow. 11.30, why I got y'all. I try to get, because this young adults, and I, and I don't always have everybody together, so I always want to put as much as I can in y'all. Be humble. You only get high when you're humble. God can't take you high if, you, if you're not humble. And here's the interesting thing. Some people hate on other people, and it's like, you don't have their heart. You want what they have, but you don't have their heart. And God knows that. 
Y'all ain't helping me up in here. The Bible says David was a man after God's own heart. And when God made him king, let me tell you, one of the most moving texts, I almost want to cry, even when I reference it. David becomes the king. After 17 years, when he becomes the king, he sits down, and there's a verse. It's recorded in Chronicles, and it's recorded in 2 Samuel. David becomes a king, and he sits there for a moment. Notice in this text I read, it says, meditate on his goodness. Because sometimes God bless us, and we move on too fast without telling him thank you properly. We just get meal, and we keep on going. Thank you. Now, sometimes you got to stop and say, God, you really did it. How many of y'all has God do some stuff and you can stop and say, he really did it? There was a time I wanted that job. He really did it. My child wasn't in church, but he saved him. He really did it. I was sick and he made me well. He really did it. David sat down. And he said, God, who am I that you would do this for me? He said, God, I owe it to you to praise you. I got to give you glory because you did it for me. I need some people up in here just to give God some glory for what he's already done for you. If he doesn't do another thing, just give him glory for what he's already done. God, you did it. You waited for me. You waited for me when I was disobedient, when I was rebellious, when I didn't believe in myself. You waited for me. God, you did it. You did it for me. Can I build? I'm open now. I'm open now. I'm open. God, you did it for me. 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 Let me tell y'all something. I am a regimented, intense person. I'm regimented and intense. Intense about ministry, intense about work. I'm intense, I'm regimented. Because it's my past that drives me. The fact that you saved me and you would use me if I went hard in the world, I got to go hard for God. Matter of fact, I'll go harder. Because he did it for me. I want somebody in here really quickly. I'll hear the voice of the Lord. If you need God to do something in your life, I want you to come to this altar right now. I want to pray for you. If there's something you're standing in the need of, for God to do. God wants to do it. But you got to surrender and submit yourself to him. And what God wants to do in your life is not material. It may come along with some materials, but that's not what he wants to do primarily. God wants to do something spiritual. David, it's going to take me a 17-year process to get you out of you so I can use you the way I want to use you. Joseph, I'm going to give you a dream, but you're not mature enough for it, so i got to break you. i got to try you by fire. i got to put you in trials. i got to let your brothers betray you. People lie on you. You end up in prison, and i got to break that stubborn with all that stuff out of you. Now I can use you. Now I'll make you mature enough where if I give you possessions, you're not going to forget about me over possessions because it really don't matter to you like that. God wants to do something in this space and in this place. 
And we don't have to wait till New Year's for a New Year's resolution. In fact, God wants you to start it now so you'll be ahead when the New Year comes. And we're going to do a 21-day fast in the month of January to purge ourselves. Because what you need done, only God can do. I want you to touch and agree with the person you're standing next to. I want us to pray, God, even now as we stand here at your altar, God, we ask that you would do what only you can. God, there are houses that need to be touched, homes that need to be touched, lives that need to be changed, people who need to be transformed. God, there's stuff within us that needs to be broken. There's doors we can't open. We've tried. We've done everything we can. You put it in our heart to go after something, but we're, we're facing a roadblock. God, we need you to do it for us. God, we've got children who are wayward. There's some who have drug addictions. There's some who have sexual perversion issues. There's some who are in the wrong activities. God, break in them what needs to be broken. Doing them what needs to be done. Fixing them what is out of place. Correct what is incorrect. Put in order what's out of order. God, set us straight like a broken bone. Put us on the right path like someone who's gone the wrong way. God, do it for us. All the prayers and all of the petitions, all the supplications that are being offered right here. God, hear them and respond. Touch every need. Meet every need. Fix every problem. Change every situation. Lift every burden. In the name of Jesus. God, take everything that's out of order and put it in order. And we'll give you praise because praise is in order. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Before I even release you to your seats, I want you to get this. Hear me. I want you to tweet this, write this down because you'll need to remember it. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. But by everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Hold on. I don't want you to miss this. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Get this, I want you to capture this. Every prayer should be peppered with praise. Pepper every prayer with praise and say, God, I'm praying, but I'm going to praise you in advance for you already haven't done it. Give God some praise right where you stand because God is doing it right now. Come on, turn to somebody and give them a hug. Give them a hunt, handshake and tell them God is already doing it. God is already fixing it. God is already changing it. God is already solving it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some glory. Give God some glory. Jesus, you are Lord. Oh, Jesus, you are Lord. 